steps here. Okay. I want to do kind of a, well, some housekeeping. And because it's been so long since I've seen you. I know. Uh, let's start with, uh, where was I? Here, maybe. Last week, I'll bring that in. I posted uh, some videos. Now, what's nice about um, exponents and logs is that they're probably familiar from other courses. You've probably seen them elsewhere. So hopefully, hey, what happened here? Uh, yeah, please stay on the line. That's all. So hopefully you got a little bit of a freebie last week. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, now it's doing what it should. Okay, just crop this up. You know what, and I'll crop this there. So I posted this. And there is a section of a chapter to want or to read if you if you like, uh, or I posted two videos. It was split across two videos, so I said you can start at the one hour mark, or you can watch it from the beginning if you want. Uh, that's all right. We haven't done. I think it's function compositions yet, so the order is a little bit different. Um, but just starting with exponents and then moving into logs exponents and logs, uh, and the notes from those videos, which are from 2020, followed by an assignment. Now, I made it part one because I thought, oh, no, we'll need to do some more practice here. So I'll post part two. But then I looked at the test and I looked at the final exam and I said, well, actually part one does it for us. So that's good, right? Um, but what I, what I will do is I'll post uh, an assignment five, which is part two, but we can use it as a bonus assignment. So if you wanna show off your exponents and log skills, then you can do that. But if you don't want to do that, I'll just drop your lowest assignment grade. So obviously, if you don't do assignment five, that's your lowest assignment grade, and it gets dropped, and hence it's a bonus assignment. Okay. And so here, I will post. Oops, I will post part two as a bonus assignment. So if you've missed on any assignment marks already, then maybe that's a nice way to make up some marks, exponents and logs, mostly exponents on that one, um, as a bonus assignment, which means, of course, it's optional. Okay. You'll see from the practice test that I posted that Things you did on Doesn't really sound like it's for me. Hello? No. Okay. It wasn't, I don't think. <clears throat> what was I saying? Practice tests. Practice tests. And then, <laughs> and then, practice tests, huh? Oh, it's just practice test the beginning somewhere. Let's uh, let's go there and see see what we can pull off here. I feel like, oh, there was. I remember in my mind congratulating myself on the beautiful segue into what? Don't you hate that? Oops. I'll just slide.
slice and dice this a little bit. Okay. Um, practice test. First practice test. Uh, I also, I just posted the solutions. Uh, and of course, that's because we've got our test on Monday. Oops, test on Monday. Eek. You can do it. So uh, let's see here. Ah, it's bothering me so much that there was something that I was about to say. Felt important, right? No, not really. Maybe, I don't know. It'll come to me, it always does, but I'll, uh, hmm. I'm out of here. No. I'm just closing the door. Yeah, that's everyone, everyone it, go I give up. Everyone go, everyone go home through. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, dang, okay. Let's see here. So the practice test is exactly what the test is going to look like, even the front page, the everything. So that part won't be, you know, weird when you flip it open. Uh, I, this is just for me for adding up the scores. So it's the score from each page. I like to keep it hidden on the back side so you're not, you know, sharing, uh, showing everyone your grades when you get them back. It's all secret. Um, and the spaces and everything. Of course, what I would recommend is that you do your studying first so you feel like you're ready to do the practice test and then do it and then look at the solutions. I know that's not always how it goes uh, and that's okay, but that's what I would recommend doing because the, the trouble with practice tests is that if you only look at the practice test or you only look at the solutions, of course, I've done that too, right? You're low on time and, and you have to learn something. And yeah, that's fine. But um, then you get so lost if the test isn't exactly like the practice test, which it rarely is, right? So it'll be similar, right? Kind of sim same concepts, that kind of thing, right? But, um, but just study first and then do the practice test, right? Um, I've posted the solutions, bah, 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 bah. but what I wanted to do first was the last page is full of exponents and logs. So uh, today, oh, I don't want to steal this one from you. How about this? We do this one and then I'll post a, a, an alternative last page for the practice test because I want to use these. I didn't prep any, any secret ones. How about that? Is that okay? And then I'll give you replacement ones and you can convince yourselves that they're all the same anyways. Same concepts. How's that? So I'll use this page and give you another page later posted. How about that? Oh, uh, just as a little side note, these numbers here in the in the boxes next to the question just tells you how many points are available for each part. Helps you kind of decide how much time to spend on it. Yeah. And, uh, and also kind of the expectation of how much work you need to show and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'm going to use this page here. Uh, which, ah, last, I'll open it. For the solutions, I tried my best to kind of color code it a little bit. Okay, and so this, um, and I'll bring it up in, here instead, because then I can use my pointer. 
Come on. The internet's just not happy with me today. Or at least in here. Okay, so the, the light blue are, that's work that I would expect to see for full marks, okay? And then the, the pink are potentially helpful notes from me to you, right? And kind of help guide you along. Uh, and then the orange is optional work. So not work that I would expect to see, but work that I do personally to help me solve the problem, right? And so, um, so that's the, the, the color scheme here. And so here for two marks, list all possible subsets, that's the power set. And so here, and then I just kind of highlighted what all the parts are, right? And, and that kind of guides you in the right direction. And uh, there were a couple of other things. Should I mention the things that aren't on your formula sheet that I would probably commit to memory now or later? Now. Okay. Going through here, uh, everything was fine. <laughs> everything was fine. Uh, up until Pascal's triangle. This expansion here is not on your formula sheet. We've done it. You can do it, but it's not on here. I kind of thought it would be. But how about this? I'll, I'll make a deal with you. I'll tell you all the things that are missing, or in my opinion, are missing. And then on the test, I'll put one of them on the board and you can decide which one, which one, I think it's gonna be this one. Yeah, that I'll put on the board. Our unofficial formula sheet, our secret formula sheet. Um, I think it's gonna be this one. This one's nasty. You don't wanna to have to remember this one. Becomes obvious, but yeah. I was gonna say, is this gonna be used on the midterm or no? Um, formulas and... No, you'll have a copy of this oh, on, the, on the test, yeah. Okay. But things that aren't on there, that's my concern. Um, so that one's a biggie, right? And so here, how do I, how do I make a note here? Not on the formula sheet. F S formula sheet. I'm lazy. So heads up there. You don't have to use Pascal's triangle to figure out, but Pascal's triangle just tells you what the choose functions are. So if you prefer to just do seven choose zero on your calculator, seven choose one, then that's why Pascal's triangle itself is optional. I don't care if you use it or not. Okay. Um, the other ones was if you have a conditional statement and you have to write the converse of it, I don't know, maybe I wasn't looking too closely, but I don't think it's on here. No, still not on there. So the converse, that one's not on there, the inverse. But if you start with something like P implies Q, then the converse is Q implies P. I think that's kind of, you can, you can memorize that, right? Uh, the inverse, you negate both sides of the original. There's like cute little memory things that you can do. I think this one I'm not too concerned about. The contrapositive is uh, the inverse of the converse, contrapositive. So you only need to remember two things. 
I know when you say it like that, right? Truth tables, remember those? Wow. And then this one is also not on the formula sheet. It's just the relationship between exponents and logs, but how I remember it is it starts in the base of the log and then it's to the power of the y and then equals x. You're gonna snowball it around the, the clock, if you will. You have to start at the base and then you kind of work your way around and you collect things. So a to the power of y equals x, a to the power of y equals x, right? Also totally kind of reasonable but as long as you remember that it's not on the formula sheet then you're then you're good okay um what was my plan my plan i'm still so thrown by the that thought that i lost sorry okay i'm here i'm here Test on Monday, that's important. Look. Um, let's do a little bit of review. I said all the things in the video, but that was, that was 2020 me. So who knows what she said, right? Uh, let's see here, how can I review it? I did not watch the videos. Scrolled through my notes. Oh yeah, that looks good. Nice. So um, let's see here. Oh, formula sheet. Did I bring one in here? I don't think so. Did I, where is it? All these things. Okay. So the quadratic formula is just good to have. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the, the logarithms where I want to focus today. And then of course, exponent laws, but I'm assuming that you're relatively comfortable with exponents. Uh, and then you've got your combinatorics down here, but that's from chapter uh, two. I want to focus here. Let's actually, let's start with our exponent laws. Since I did assume that you had exponents under control. What are some of the exponent laws? I say exponent laws because it's fun to say log laws, but they're not, they're just rules. Um, if you have the same base multiplying together, then what happens to the exponents is that we can add them. That's fine. I think everyone's on board with that. Same thing. If you're dividing the same base, then you can subtract the exponents. Why? Because you could rewrite this as b to the power of x times b to the power of negative y, right? Anything in the denominator, if you bring it upstairs, you make it negative, right? And then that brings it upstairs. And then you're back to here, b to the power of x plus negative y makes x minus y. And that's why, 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 why it's like that, okay? If you have a power outside of power, you can just multiply those powers together. That's fair, b times, or b to the power of x times y. And then uh, this is the, the fact that I used over here, that b to the negative x is the same thing as one over b to the x. 
hopefully those are ringing a bell. Let's see here. Now logs. How many times have you seen logs in your other courses? Not really? That's surprising. There was a, a stint in my academic career where I felt like everyone was just doing logs. All my courses was covering logs at the same time, but we are already knew that they're not that hard. They're important, but okay. Here, my log laws. It's more fun that way, log laws. If you've seen Arrested Development, there's Bob Loblaw's Law Vlog, Oy. <laughs> which is what it makes me think of. Okay, so if you have something multiplying inside the logs, then you can break it up by adding the two logs, assuming that you have the same base, right? You have to keep the same base and this is the money maker here. This is why we need logs, right? Uh, because if we have something in the exponent, so up in the power that I need to solve for, how do I, how can I get it, right? How am I gonna bring it downstairs? Well, I have to wrap it up in a log and then the log laws say that, well, that's equivalent to taking N, which was in the power, Right, so it brings it down up front, and then I have n up front times the log, and now I'm I'm able to solve for that power, right? And so that's that's the reason we need logs usually. If you have a, a log base b and you have the b in the exponent, then uh, those will cancel, and you just drop out the x. Okay? Essentially, what that's saying is that. Uh, log base b of b to the power of x, but if I use the log law from the previous line, right, then it's x times the log base b of b, but the log base b of b is just one. Yeah. So as long as they're the same, then they're one. So then you have x times one, which is x. That's handy if you want to cut down on some work, right? Usually or often I'll use the same log base as the base in the exponent so that it just cancels to one and it goes away, right? Which we'll see. Uh, if I'm dividing inside the log, the log base B of X over Y, then it turns into subtraction. Why? Why, why, why? Why? Because I could rewrite x over y as x times y to the power of negative one, yeah? And then I'm here, right? Log of x plus the log of y to the power of negative one. But then by this law, I can bring the negative one out front. So you really only need these two and the rest are all extra. Let's talk about this one. I'll outline what I just blabbed. All right, you can rewrite this as log base B of X times Y to the negative one. Right, that's allowed by exponents because b to the negative x is one over b to the x. Okay. So that's gonna be the log base b of x plus the log base b of y to the negative one. But then you have log base b of x plus, I'm allowed to bring this down in front by the log laws. And so now I have plus negative one times the log base B of Y, which gets me to 
log base b of x minus the log base b of y. Woo! Nice. So we don't really need this formula, but it's nice to have. All right, take what you can get. <clears throat> we can use the change of base formula. So if you have log base B of C, then that's going to be the same as the log base A. So introducing a new base A of C. So this one goes in the numerator and then log base A of B. Usually we work this the other way. So if we want to simplify something, right? If I have log base 10 of four over log base 10 of two, right? then I can do log base two of 10 is the same, or I lost it. Forgot what number I said for C, sorry. <laughs> Did I say four? Yeah. Wow, nice. Log base two of four? Anyways, usually we work this one backwards to simplify. And finally, raising B, so the same base, right? Essentially doing the same thing, essentially, essentially, uh, doing the same thing as here, but in reverse, right? You get B to the power of log base B of X gets you back to X. All right. Little quick refresher on logs. Any questions though, before we start some, some of these questions to work through? Hit it, Emily. All right, all right. Let's see here. Okay. I guess that's the end of the review. So we want to express four to the power of three over two equals eight in logarithmic form. So there's going to be a question that looks like this and you have to be able to write it in logarithmic form. Now, the most important thing, and this is one of those things that uh, is not on your formula sheet, is that if a to the power, and I want to use the same power of y is equal to x, then log base a of x is equal to y. That's going to be an important one to remember. Because yeah. then, and how I remember it, right, where I was worried I was going to use the wrong order of the letters and then really mess you up when you read the solutions. So I didn't want to do that. Uh, but how I remember it, right, is you cycle through here a to the power of y, a to the power of y equals x. Right. And then you can unravel it the same way, but to me it's harder. Right. Uh, I guess you could read it as x is equal to y as a power of a. I guess it works the other way too, but it's, I don't know, it's weird. Okay, so in this case, my A is four, so that's a good place to start. So I have log base four. The X is on the equal side, so on the right-hand side, so log base four of eight is equal to three over two, because that's what's in your in your power. 
this is all I'm expecting to see, right? There's not really any work to be shown and that's why it's only one mark, right? It's either right or wrong. So nothing, nothing left to do there. Yeah. Take some practice though, just go slow. You can always use, make sure your calculator has, well, make sure you bring your calculator, but also check to see if your calculator has a, a log empty base button, if that makes sense. So mine uh, does all the kind of engineering calculators do. On mine, how do I, how can I, how can I do this? Uh, oh, I know. Oh, doesn't like that at all. That's, whoa. I think it's because I'm projecting. Did not like that. Let's see if I got anything. I didn't. Let's see here. Nice. Just gotta be quick. So if you have a button that looks like this one, it's a log with an empty base. Then you can put in any base and you can confirm it, right? You can confirm your answer. If you only have a, a log or a, an LN button, LN is the natural log, which I'm uh, more uh, used to using just because in, in stats and uh, a lot of, Kind of, whoa, it's not showing my picture. Was it before? Oh, all that for nothing? Oh, there it is. It's just when I am cropping it. Um, I use the natural log for, for anything that I do. Uh, and so, but I think if anything, you guys would use the log base too in kind of electronic engineering and stuff like that. They use log base two um, and log base 10, who knows who uses that sound, I think, like kind of sound waves uses log base 10. So uh, different fields use different bases as their kind of go-to base. Uh, but I think you guys will use log base two. Yeah. Off topic, I know there's going to be some questions that have like an NCR, like that calculation button. Mm -hmm. and do you know like if that one and like most calculators have that one for it? Sure do. Yeah. It's down here. Oh, dang. I need to take another picture. <laughs> I need to take a better picture of my beautiful calculator. Let me try. I think I just got excited that I was able to take a picture. That's cut off the bottom, but whatever. Uh, I want to crop. Don't worry, I'm just cropping. Crop it up. There. And then I'll delete this one because it's old now. Here's my, my beautiful calculator. And so the NCR button is here. So if you wanna do, for example, 10 choose two, then you would have to do, or let's use single digits, nine choose two. In my case, I would have to hit the shift button NCR and then two. 
and then you have to hit the equals because otherwise it won't. I think it won't do it. Nine, choose two, yeah. Just as a, a quick example, nine, choose two. That's how you get it. And I'll circle the log base, anything button. But here's the, the natural log ln, which is log base E. Yeah. Um, those are your go-to logs. The common log is log base 10. Log base E is the natural log. I don't think log base two has a name, but maybe it does. Who knows? Okay, so then you can check your work. I was about to punch it on the picture of the calculator. Log base four of eight. Don't worry, I confirmed it. It does equal three over two. Okay, so that one feeling good, right? How about another one? Oh, not the solutions. Let's see here. You have to solve. Now, what's another thing that I'm assuming that you are on board with? When I say solve, I mean solve for x, right? And so here, let's make a note of that. Solve for x. Just in case it's not, it's not clear. So we have log base x of 729 is equal to six. Now I want to solve for X. How am I going to do that? I think the easiest way to do it is going to be to rewrite this log as an exponent. Well, wouldn't you know it? First we go forward and then we go backward. Same formula though. So when I have it as a log though, it's easier for me to see that this is going to be x to the power of 6 is equal to 729, right? And that's an equivalent uh, equation. So x, x to the power of 6 is equal to 729. Now, the x is out in the open. I can solve for this, right? How can I solve for this? I can take the sixth, the root of 729, right? How am I gonna do that? It's also gonna be because it's even, it's gonna be plus minus, but you can't have a negative base. So the negative is out anyways. So if you forgot to put that on there, that's totally fine. Um, and we want the sixth root of 729. Yeah. There's no uh, special root button. And so what do we have to do? We have to raise, this is the same thing as 729 to the power of one over six. That's how you get the nth root is just raising it to the power of one over n. Oh, I think they all lock, for, and it's super annoying. So I'm constantly running to the door. But I don't know how to fix it. And I don't think I'm supposed to. I don't know. Who knows? Um, oh, we're so close. 729 to the power of 1 over 6. 729. I don't know about you guys, but I have this, this button here. You'll have something similar, right? Uh, so I have, if I punch in 729 and then this button here, it's got the special case of the power of two. Just, I don't know why. 
probably need it to fill the row or something. Uh, and then X to the power of anything. So you put in 729 and then hit this button and then make sure the one over six all stays in the power because otherwise it, it's not gonna do it properly. I almost used my picture calculator again. Yikes. It's been kind of a long week already. Um, so then X is plus minus three, womp womp. But the base must be positive. So X is three. Nice. Not too bad. How about another one? I guess there's, there's kind of easy two marks and hard two marks. Sometimes I just mark on a two mark scale regardless, because if you go to right, you get two. And then if you're kind of close, you get one and a half. And if you're halfway there, you get one. And if you did something, if you breathe on a page, you get 0.5. So it's still, <laughs> you have to write something down, but usually that's how it goes. <laughs> well, they were there, they tried. So that's something to remember. I do want to uh, give you the pep talk. Yeah. I was going to say, could you show us on the calculator how to do like, I guess it'd be square root of six before we step through this, right? Uh, the square root, let's see here. Or just, uh, yeah. Do you mean like just a regular square root? Like you can square root to the power of six. Or like the, the sixth, the root? Yeah. Like okay. Just, yeah. yeah, so you would go, so if you want to do, let's grab that one that we just did. Um, I'll just copy this. I'll bump this down. Okay, let's see here. So if you want to do 729, uh, the sixth root of 729, first you have to recognize that you have to convert it to an exponent, 729 to the power of 1 over 6, and then 729 to the power of 1 over 6 is going to look like this. Uh, do I have to do the 729? Copy, copy, it's not too bad. I'm lazy, but I'm not that lazy. There, 729 and then this power button. I'll make it bigger. And then to the power of one over six, but just to play it safe, to make sure these are optional, but I would wrap them up in brackets, the one over six, because otherwise you might end up with 729 to the power of one, and then that's divided by six, and that's not what you want, right? Uh, but the screen will show you, um, but I can't, um, so that's okay. To the power of one, divided by six, I'm getting there. Close the bracket, make it bigger, and then equals. Keep picking the wrong choice. Paste image there <laughs> equals. And then it'll give you three. So 
This looks like a like a movie ransom note. Oh, they left us a note. Seven twenty nine to the power of one over six. It's gotta mean something. It doesn't. Well, it does to us. I'll make this smaller here. I'll keep that little image handy or try to. Does that, that help? Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, so make sure that you are comfortable with your calculator. Don't forget it. I have a, a bag O calculators that I bring to test just in case. But I think I'm down to five now. It used to be like a kind of a big bag. It's kind of like a take a penny, leave a penny. I'd pick some up. Is this your calculator? No, no. Okay. Just hang on to them forever. What if I want to solve the log? Now, if there's no base, what's the implied base? The implied base is 10, right? The common log. And so here, uh, this means base 10. When there's nothing there. I mentioned that because what do I want to do? I want to get at what's inside the log. So what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to undo the log, right? And so how can I do that? From our formula sheet, if I want to get at what's inside the log, right, then I need to raise it to the power of the same base, right? But I need to do it to both sides, otherwise I've lost the equality, right? So here, I'll bring this in here and I'll say recall. Right. So raising a log to the same base will leave you with just what's in on the inside. Okay. So if I have something like log of 2x plus 6 is equal to 5, then if I raise both sides to the power or 10 to the power of what's on both sides, I guess. I wanted to say raise it to the power of 10, but it's not technically correct. Log, so 10 to the power of log of 2x plus 6 is equal to 10 to the power of 5. You must do, uh, do, do is it was a bad commitment. Must. apply to both sides. Otherwise we lose the inequality, right? Or the inequality, the equality. Otherwise we lose two O's, one O. Lose. It's gonna go with two O's. It's like loosen something. Loose is like loose. Otherwise, we no longer have equality. There, I didn't have to spell it. Okay. But now that I have 10 to the power of log base 10, right? That's why it's important to recognize that if there is no base, then it's base 10. Right, and so now log base 10, that's this scenario here, right? 10 to the power of log base 10 drops down and just gives me what's on the inside. So we're effectively canceling there, right? We're stuck with a 10 on this side. We can deal with that 10 to the power of five, right? It's big, but can, we can do it. And then we're left with what's on the inside. 2x plus six is equal to, uh, some large number, 10 to the power of five. 
I get one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five zeros. Now it's a matter of solving for x. 2x, I have to subtract 6 from both sides, is 99994. Nine, nine, so then the x must be that divided by 2, which is 49997. We did it. Also two marks, but this one was more work. I guess not. Well, mm -hmm. A little bit more work. We had to rely on kind of a, a harder formula. But then the math itself is easy. It's always easy. Okay. Sometimes if it's a really hard question, then I don't make it out of very much so that it doesn't bring you down too much. I want you to try it and hopefully get it, but I don't want it to wreck your day. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. If you're ever finding yourself, especially oh, well, on my test, especially if you find that um, you know what you would do if you could just get this one little piece of information that you need later on, that happens a lot in math, right? And so, oh, I, I just, I can't figure out how to get this, but if I had this, I would do this, 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 right? telling me that you know how to do the rest is worth marks, okay? And so even if you uh, wanna say something like, I, I can't figure out what this value is, but I'm gonna make it be four, right? And then just work through the problem, assuming that whatever you needed was four, I don't know, then showing your work. You won't be able to get marks for that initial part, Right, but I will be able to give you marks for, for the remainder as long as it's um, logical, right? And so don't be afraid to, to show me everything that you know that's the point of the test, right? Okay, solve this logarithmic equation. Again, solve, of course, means solve for x. And we've got X's in here. They're all split up in the logs. What's, uh, there are a number of ways that you could solve this. So I'm not, I'm not strict on which way you use, right? There's kind of different methods that you could use. Um, but what I would do, what I would do is I would combine these into one log, right? I check and I see that these are both the same base, right? And so, so that's a good start. I know that that's one of the criteria that I have. So then if I'm subtracting logs, let's see, let's go up and grab from the formula sheet. The one that I want is this one. because I'm subtracting the logs. Oh. Put recall there. Okay. So now we're working from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, right? We can work either direction, whatever way we need to do. Uh, and so if I'm subtracting, then that's going to be equivalent to division inside the same log, right? And so log base two, log base two, that's important. If they're not the same base, you can't combine them, right? Then you're stuck. But for us, I'm gonna rewrite this as log base two of X divided by X minus two.
is equal to one. Hmm. Now I've got them even more trapped inside the log. How do we get them out, to, out of the log? Well, we use the same trick as before, right? This one here. So if I have a, a log base two, what do I have to do to get rid of the log? I have to raise everything to the power of two. And so I'll bring this one in as well. Copy. Paste. And so I need two to the power of log base two of x over x minus two is equal to two to the power of one. Right? Half a mark off if you forget that. It happens. I consider it kind of a typo, right? Uh, typos get half a mark off, not a typo. But it's just a, a kind of a, you're working too quickly. Okay. So now everything's been raised to two. And now by doing that, I can cancel this. They just kind of disappear. And I'm left with, that was the whole point, right? X over X minus two is equal to two to the power of one, which leaves me at two. Okay, a little bit of leg work, but not too bad. What am I gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to multiply this X minus two over here. And so I get X is equal to two times X minus two. And I'm running out of space. So X is equal to two X minus four. And then do a, a sneaky switcheroo, right? X minus two or, because I don't like negatives, I'm gonna subtract X from this side and add four to the other side to avoid my negatives. So I get four is two X minus X. Oops, that doesn't look like X. Well, it started out as a one there. So four is two X minus X, which leaves me at X. I'll put it over here, X equals four. Womp womp. Same two marks, but quite a bit of, of work more, I think. Any questions about that one? Kind of a little bit sneaky. You got the head shake, good to go. Here's the money maker. Still two marks, just in case it, it's not that good. It was towards the, the end of the material, so it's only fair. If I have to solve this exponential equation, I don't think I need to write it again, uh, but we're solving for x, right? And we said, okay, well, the reason that we use logs usually is to be able to bring things that we want to solve for down from the exponent, right? And so here, I want to solve for x, solve for x in the exponent. So what am I going to have to do? First thing I'm going to need to do is just get 3 to the power of 2x minus 1 on its own. Because if I wrap this all up in a log, it's, it's not gonna work out nicely. It'll work, but it's more writing, which I don't like for me personally. I'll start by writing out negative two times three to the power of two X minus one is equal to negative four. Now I wanna get three to the power of two X minus one on its own, which means three to the power of two X minus one is negative four divided by negative two, putting me at 
a nice two. That's your first step. And then it's going to be a little bit easier to deal with. Okay. Now, to get that x down from the power, we use that one that I highlighted, right? This important one, copy. Mm -hmm. Right. If I have something in the exponent that I want, if I wrap it up in a log, yeah. You just divided both sides by negative two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because this is multiplying here, so I just I skipped writing it out. So now, if I want to bring this n down or any power down. Uh, first step is going to be to wrap it up in a log. Any log will do, as long as you use the same one on both sides. Log base 10, log base e, log base 2, log base 3. It's a Dr. Seuss thing. Uh, no, I just made that up, but feel free to write it down because I'll forget. Uh, we could do log base 3, but I was going to save that one for an alternative solution. Why, why would I use it for an alternative solution? It saves me a little bit of time, right? Because it would cancel out here. But how about I just use log base 10 for now? It's gonna be easier if you use log base three, but I wanna show you that you could just pick any log and you don't have to remember which one. It'll still work. Log base three of two X minus one, is the log of two. I can't be as lenient if you forget the log on the two because then it really mucks things up as you go. So just always do to both sides what you're doing to one. Now this, right, I'm allowed to rewrite as two X minus one times the log of three just by this log law. So I get two X minus one times the log of three is equal to the log of two. <clears throat> I'm trying to solve for X. And so log of three is just a number. It's not a nice number, but it's a number. And so what I can do is I can divide both sides by the log of three trying to get x on its own. So I get 2x minus 1. I don't need those brackets anymore, I guess. There. Is the log of 2 over the log of 3. OK. Then solving for x, I get 2x is the log of 2 divided by the log of 3 plus 1. And then finally, x is all that, the log of 2 over the log of 3 plus 1, all divided by 2. We can simplify just a little bit more. Right here, we can simplify using what property? This property, change of base formula. Right? Here I have, in this case, I have log base 10 of two over the log base 10 of three. So I can rewrite that as the log base three of two. So this going over here, right, I have the log base 10 of two over the log base 10 of three, which I can rewrite 
as the log base three of two. So then X is gonna be log base three of two plus one divided by two. Or what would have been easier? That's the one that I said I didn't want to do right away, although I was this close. Here, instead of using log base 10, I could have used log base 3, right? And so let's do an alternative solution. Either way will work, just depends on what you like. So starting from where, starting from the top, negative two times three to the power of two X minus one yeah, is equal to negative four. So again, I have three to the power of two X minus one is equal to two. Now, using a base, use log base three, right? Oy. To cancel the three, I'll put it in quotes. It's not proper, but it does cancel it though. Uh, to cancel the three, So then if I wrap it up in log base three of three to the power of two X minus one is equal to log base three of two. Same property, right? As before, wrapping it up in a log, I'm able to bring that two X minus one outside. So then I have two X minus one times the log base three of three but we remember that that actually is just one. And that's why we did that. Log base three of two. So now I have two X minus one times one. That's a lot nicer to deal with, right? And so now I have two X min oops, minus one is equal to the log base three of two. We had to use three as the base, but we we were gonna end up with log base three of two anyways. And so this was just a quicker way of getting there. And then I get two X is log base three of two. You know what? Let's just cut to the chase here, divide by two. And my threes, they're so important, but I keep writing them all sloppy there while everything's sloppy. I'd say this is a little bit quicker, but it relies on recognizing that you have to use the same base as what you have. But once you start to use this, this shortcut and you get used to using it, then it's hard to shake it. So, um, but just know that you can get to the same solution without recognizing that shortcut, right? So you're totally safe. And those are the skills that I want you to have from exponents and logs. There was more, but those are the ones that I want you to have for both the test and for the final. Any questions about that? Any questions in general? I was just gonna say for the midterm, it's uh, for chapter one, two, three, is this also gonna be included or no? This is on it, yeah. Number four. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's from a different, so it's not chapter four of our textbook. So that's why I'm kind of just calling it exponents and logs, but okay. it is on it. Okay. Yeah, up to this extent. Yeah. So nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah. Any other questions?
I'm scared to look at how much time I have left, but I'm not really in the business of wasting everyone's time. I know, I, I, you can make me dance. Oh, no? questions, comments, concerns. All right. Um, I thought that would take longer. Maybe I went too fast. No, no, goodness, no. Uh, all right. Uh, if you want to stick around and work on some questions, you're welcome to. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you on Monday. Do you remember last year when the final? Were you there in the final uh, last year when the kid group stuffed down the? Was it? Uh, you know that room that we were in? Just like a little hour teaching stuff. Well, I didn't teach one thirty nine last year. No. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna stop this.